everyone. It's good to see all of your faces. Uh, this is our second installment for our herbal happy hour uh, for uh, this quarantine time in April. I hope everybody has been motivated to uh, do something that they've never done before during this quarantine time. Reset, uh, a life reset, a family reset, a personal reset for everyone on the planet. And I hope that you are finding some time outside of being worried and stressed out and frantic and chaotic and all of the things that um, the world just really kind of wants us to give into. I hope you found some time, a lot of time outside of that um, to just kind of relax and enjoy every moment with gratitude. Tonight with your herbal happy hour, we are going to uh, dive into a favorite herb of mine, tarragon. And for those of you who are new on the scene, I am your host, Angelique Savade Greer. I am the visionary and founder of the NCB School of Herbalism and Holistic Health, the oldest African American uh, herbalism school in the South. We are uh, over 25 years old at this point, and the Sacred Waters Retreat for Women of Color, and the Afro Botany Immersion Certification and Conference held every year in August in Costa Rica. So all three of those babies, uh, I have definitely birthed from the potential of the universe. I'm glad you are here with us tonight. Tonight, um, we're gonna have a little fun. Uh, for those of you who joined us last week for our Herbal Happy Hour, uh, we had two strippers coming to the stage. That was Sweet Basil and uh, her sister, Sexy Sage. Yeah, they came to the stage last week and uh, the sisters had their dollars ready and they was making it rain with the drinks. I made drinks for everybody in the house and everybody got a free drink. So guess what? Tonight is the same thing. We only have one uh, famous stripper on the scene today. Her name is Tempting Tasty Tarragon. And I hope that if you have not used tarragon before in your culinary, um, uh, in your culinary world, that you will be introduced to tarragon tonight in the drinking world. So uh, this evening is all about just kind of relaxing, interacting with everyone. I'm gonna share uh, this tasty recipe uh, with myself and my tech man, who's my husband. Uh, uh, so I, I try to get him drunk on Thursdays. Maybe I can take advantage of him a little bit, just, just a little bit. And then we'll share some things about tarragon you may or may not have known. So uh, this is more than just a little herbal happy hour. This is a little bit of info, a little bit of laugh, a little bit of, well, a lot of laugh. We need a lot of laugh uh, during this quarantine period. So if everyone is ready, let's go. Uh, I am going to make a quick disclaimer. So last night during our podcast, Seed Soil and Soul, uh, I want to thank everyone that tuned in for that last night. We had uh, uh, about 50 people on for that podcast, that live, live podcast last night. And uh, I got some uh, really good reviews uh, afterwards. Some of the reviews included some comments like this. If you are tuned in to anything live, anything, not just this, but anything live that you're gonna do over Zoom, if you're going to be busy moving around, we would ask, and I would ask, that you consider moving your uh, live feed over to uh, closing your video and just having the audio on until you can get still. What that does for everyone else is it keeps everybody's focus. It's like, you know, everybody's focused in the classroom, and when somebody's too busy or their screen is moving around, sometimes it could be a little distracting. I didn't realize that because I'm on the other side of this. So I'm used to teaching, so I'm used to people kind of, you know, kind of moving around and jostling around. But it was a really, really good uh, comment, and I appreciate, uh, uh, you know, the advice on that. So if you if you find that you have to do something, just go ahead and put your um, video on, um, close your video out, and just keep your audio on until you can come back and, you know, kind of, kind of be still. All right. So we're gonna get started. So today uh, with tarragon, we're gonna be using, um, of course, fresh tarragon. Is that, no, let me go back. Is, is there anyone who's watching tonight who has tarragon? A show of hands, anybody? Did, does anybody have tarragon on them? 
Anybody? I can't see everybody. So I'm going to assume there's somebody on here that has some tarragon. So we've got some fresh tarragon that we're going to, we're going to use. And um, this just happens to be a Mexican tarragon. So um, uh, I have been asked what is the difference between this species of tarragon and a regular species of tarragon. Um, I don't know. They both taste good in drinks. So there you go. Uh, I am going to say from the herbalist perspective, though, the medicinal properties would be slightly different. Of course, this is a different genus and a, a different species. So the medicinal properties of this particular plant is going to be um, slightly or significantly different. Um, this Mexican tarragon, however, um, is just a little bit spicy spicier than regular tarragon, and you'll find that to be true if you decide to make this drink. And I hope that you do because it's a great introduction to spring. Um, so you're going to have your fresh tarragon. Tonight we're going to be using um, our Amsterdam uh, original gin, and we're going to be using, I'm going to do two ways tonight, and we're going to be using our pineapple Bacardi rum, clear. This drink um, doesn't particularly blend well with dark liquors. So if you have something clear, um, besides Everclear, don't, don't do it with Everclear. I don't, Everclear, it's gonna burn in and burn out. So don't do it with Everclear. But something clear um, that you prefer, these two are usually the best suited for tarragon. You can taste the tarragon if you, if you were to use these two. So we're gonna use these two tonight. And then also, um, I did, um, you won't need this much, but because I use lime juice a lot, this is four limes freshly um, squeezed today. So this is lime juice. And then I um, made a simple syrup, and I'm going to give you the instructions on how to make a simple syrup. Um, this is actually made from the tarragon. So it's the tarragon simple syrup. Uh, the recipe will post in the chat, I believe. Um, I think our social media director is going to post that, or maybe she's going to post it after, after the podcast. So um, this is our tarragon simple syrup. And then um, for those of you who don't like alcohol, I would suggest um, you turn this drink into a spritzer. Um, or if you're having guests and you have some guests that want a non-alcoholic version, you can always use uh, a spritzer. Particularly, not the, not the lime. This is a lime flavor because we like mojitos around here. But um, uh, you can just use plain um, soda water, all right? So um, you've got those combinations. Of course, you need some ice. So let's get started. So what we're going to do is let me get my measuring stuff together. The first thing we're going to do now, don't forget, this drink is called the turnip because um, you got a little gin. They say it makes you sin. You got some Bacardi clear rum. You might turn up, do something strange for a little bit of change. Or maybe a whole lot of change. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? Who cares? It's quarantine. Do something strange for some change. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, make this simple syrup. So the simple syrup is uh, super easy. If you ever want to take your herbs and turn that into a simple syrup style um, uh, for, you can use a simple syrup in food. Um, uh, it has all kinds of culinary uses, or you can use it in your drinks. Um, uh, the, the easiest way to make a simple syrup is use one cup of sugar, one cup of water, and add, um, I did six sprigs of tarragon today, but if you want it stronger, you can do up to eight sprigs of tarragon. One cup of sugar, one cup of water, and six to eight sprigs of your favorite herb, okay? You're gonna bring the sugar and the water to a boil, to a boil and stir that vigorously until the sugar is dissolved. And then you're going to turn it down because you don't want to destroy the herb. Um, tarragon is very gentle. She does not like rough play. I don't care what they say about her, the rumors you've heard about her, taste of tarragon. She does not like to play rough. She's a gentle herb. And um, when you're dealing with herbs, especially with the leaves of the plants, you never want to boil them. You always want to steep them. 
So once the syrup and the water has come to a complete boil and is completely dissolved, you want to turn that down to a low simmer and then add your sprigs. Now, I also added some fresh ginger root. I don't know if you can see it in this bottle. It's at the top. Let's see if I can turn it around. I added fresh ginger to the simple syrup while it was boiling in its boil state. So um, uh, this drink will have a little bit of spice to it. I like a little bit of spice um, when it comes to the mixing it with the gin. So now, um, after you turn that heat down and you add your plant, put a lid over it and just let it steep for 30 minutes to an hour. You should be able to take that lid off and uh, the aroma of the tarragon should hit you. If you take the top off and the aroma didn't hit you, you either didn't use enough tarragon or the plant is not a good plant. Sometimes plants, um, depending on where you get them, they may have been sprayed and you didn't know it or the plant may have been harvested too soon. So you will not get the aromatic properties from the plant. So you should be able to smell the tarragon in your simple syrup as you're um, um, simmering it. So um, once it's finished simmering, turn it off completely, leave the lid on and let it cool. Once it's cooled, you wanna use a funnel and any you know, container that you want, mason jar, or if, you, uh, if you're into recycling, then you wanna recycle something from your refrigerator, um, something glass that has been cleaned and sterilized. Uh, because if not, mold will grow into that because you've added the sarah, I mean, you've added the sugar and the herb. Mold will grow very, very quickly. So you want to make sure that the container that you use is sterilized. And then um, use a strainer and a funnel and just strain the herbs and whatever other debris that has come off during the boiling stage into your, your bottle. And you now have a simple syrup. Uh, you can refrigerate this. This will keep as long as it's cold. If you wanted to preserve this for longevity, you could add um, vodka to this. You could add you know, a little bit of vodka to your simple syrup and that would definitely protect it. Um, also, if you uh, are a fruity person and you want to uh, add fruit to your simple syrup, um, this, mix, mi this mixture would be good with pineapples, strawberries, and uh, blueberries work really, really well with this one. Uh, you definitely want to make sure that you uh, add vodka to that because the you know it's going to ferment, and um, uh, you might have a little kombucha drink that might not be too healthy. Uh, so it it might be better to to just um, add a little bit of vodka to this and and uh, keep this for longevity in the fridge. All right. So once you finish making your simple syrup, the hard part is over. So the next thing you want to do is. Um, for those of you who do some drinking, you know what this is. This is our shot pour. This, of course, one side is our single shot. The opposite side is our double shot. I'm a double shot girl. And um, uh, this drink will call for a double shot. Now, if you, if, you are, um, if you like to go easy on your drinks, then, of course, do a single shot. And if you want to go even easier, then the best solution is to always any up with your Perrier water or your sparkling water of, of your choice. I'm not, I'm, 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 I'm not brand bougie on the, on, the, on the sparkling water, only my alcohol, all right? So um, once you do that, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our spritzer next. So spritzers are really, really easy to make too. So in your spritzer, what you can do is, um, you can take um, a few cubes of ice, and add that to your glass. Well, if I can get this ice out. Um, this drink is also really good with uh, crushed ice too. If you like crushed ice, um, this works really well. With ice. We're gonna do a little bit more because our mm, syrup is a little bit, it's just a little bit warm, so I'm gonna cool it down. All right, so you wanna add the ice to your glass for your spritzer, and then you wanna do, you wanna do um, your simple syrup, and you wanna do uh, two shots. So you wanna do the two shot side. Remember, this is the one shot, two shot. We're gonna do two shots of your simple syrup. 
for each glass. If you are diabetic, my disclaimer for last week was, for all the diabeticals out there, you may want to alternate your sugar substitute. So um, I have not had this drink with honey, so I don't know how, how well this would blend with honey. Uh, but agave nectar would work really, really well. You could also use, um, uh, if you wanted to do your simple syrup using uh, organic cane sugar or turbinado sugar, those are really good alternatives as well. But uh, make sure that you are monitoring your health while you are in this quarantine period because some of us go to the refrigerator more than we need to. Some of us are doing some extra added activities, which puts a little extra stress on our bodies when we think we're really relaxing. So um, uh, I don't want you to have to increase your medication because you've been home drinking so much that the sugar has now forced your pancreas to work extra time. So um, two shots of simple syrup to your glass. And then... Got the syrup all in my hands. It gets pretty sticky. And then um, you want to go with your lemon juice. Now, if you like tart drinks, of course you want to pour more of the lemon juice. But if you're not, if you're not a tart person, try a little and then taste it and then add. It, all right. So um, I'm just using a quarter, a quarter cup measurement spoon. Um, this is going to be enough for the both of these glasses. I'm just going to divvy it up. And I like I am I because mm, I traditionally don't like to follow recipes. Sometimes the recipes change. Every time you see me do it, it might be a little different. So don't be like, ooh, Savande, the first time you did that, did that, 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 that. I'm a Scorpio. Sometimes I change. It's like the wind. All right. Okay, so that's your lemon juice, all right? Now, with, after you do your lemon juice, for you non-drinkers, you would then add your Perrier water or your um, soda water. This would now become the spritzer. This would now become the spritzer. What we're gonna do, we're gonna bypass this for right now and we're going to add um, the alcohol. So we're gonna do, um, uh does it make a difference what you you, do, you want gin or you want rum he wants rum all right so we're gonna do we're gonna do his in rum first bacardi uh, pineapple um you can use anybody's brand you know pineapple rum it doesn't make a difference whatever you like we're gonna do two shots of rum And then um, I am going to drink the gin one. Two shots of gin for the other one. I need to get my ABC license. The bougie herb lady. All right. So you've added your alcohol, and now you want to top it off uh, with your Perrier water. So and you can do, I, you know, you can do as much or as more as you need. Or excuse me, as much as or as less as you, you think you need. We'll start off with half and half in these. And then, because I like pretty things, just the, of tarragon, look at there. You gotta, you gotta make sounds when you drop it in, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna do three, how about that? Make it bougie. And stare it slightly, just enough. I 
don't know if you can see these plants floating around on the top. Let's see how low I can get on the screen. I, I can't do it without, without spilling it. Can, can you see those tarragon leaves floating around in that drink? Now listen, you make sure when you're making this drink that you tell the people that this is an herbal drink. I don't want them to think that your drink glasses are dirty or anything, okay? Cleanliness is next to godliness. So let them know you're making herbal drinks. So there'll be herbs floating around in these glasses. So I'm gonna give, is this the right one? Yes, I'm gonna give that one to you, sir. Um, cheers, everybody. Come on up to the bar, get you a free drink. It's on the house. Uh, it is ladies' night tonight, so. Um, oh. <laughs> Lovely. Now, I'm gonna ask a question while I'm sipping on this drink. How many of you have actually used tarragon in your culinary concepts in the kitchen? Anybody using tarragon? A mixture of herbs that have tarragon in it? Anyone? Anyone? Raise your hand. Mute, unmute. Uh, uh, Jamie. Jamie. Unmute Jamie's mic. What did you make using tarragon, Jamie? Chicken. <laughs> oh, chicken. Yeah. Chicken goes well with tarragon. Um, this is actually a great uh, drink to pair with uh, a chicken dish that has tarragon in it. Um, you will get the back flavor of the tarragon um, in this drink. Uh, when you pair that with chicken, this is also good paired with uh, flounder and cod as well. So um, uh, uh, this is a this is a, a a good a good drink for those two types of um, meat dishes. This is also paired good with asparagus and Brussels sprouts, believe it or not. Um, tarragon brings the, uh, the Brussels sprouts out, the flavor of the Brussels sprouts, and definitely the, the flavor of the asparagus. If you ever wanna try that, just you know, get some fresh tarragon or get some you know, dry tarragon from the grocery store and um, try it on those vegetables if, if those are you know, vegetables that you, you like to eat. Um, so let's talk about uh, the benefits of tarragon, not just uh, from a, um, uh, you know, a alcoholic point of view, but let's talk about tarragon, the benefits of tarragon from a medicinal standpoint. Um, could someone, you can Google it. This is, you know, this is, we're, we're just, leave, this is leisure time. Somebody tell me what they can find on tarragon and I'll tell you if it's true or not, because of course, you know, everything on Google isn't true. So, uh, what do you know about tarragon um, that that you could that you could give to everyone? Make sure your volume is turned up on your um, the device that you're using, so that when you get unmuted, everyone can hear you. Somebody, tarragon, hand. Anybody? First person to come up to the bar, get a drink. Um, well, Lise, yes. <laughs> Hi, is, I think tarragon is a digestive herb. It right? is, it is, tarragon is a digestive herb. It's, it's, a, it's a bitter herb, it's in the bitter um, category of herbs. And so anything bitter always works for the digestive system. Bitter herbs are meant for the digestive system. Remember that, anything bitter. So if you have an adversity to things that are bitter, that tells me as a master herbalist that your body's kind of out of alignment. You know, if you go like, you get bitter stuff and you just cringe at something bitter, that tells me that your body is out of alignment and that, and that your digestive system needs some help. It needs a little bit of help. It needs a little bit of kick. Um, bitter herbs are, um, I've got some, I'm chewing some now. Bitter herbs are definitely designed to um, uh, activate the enzyme uh, in your mouth. Um, and when you chew that to uh, a mush, uh, what that does is it, 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 it sends the peptides down and it, it acts with the enzymes in the stomach and the stomach is better able to digest anything that you've taken on. 
So um, the old folk would say, it's always good to have something bitter before dinner. Bitter before dinner is the rule of thumb. Have something bitter before dinner because you get your stomach fluids and juices to working before the food actually hits. Um, this is a sidebar and just a nerd note of mine. Chewing gum activates your digestive enzymes. It's poor, it's a poor way to do it, but if you're a gum chewer, you're always activating your digestive enzymes and you never get what's healthy because you're just getting the sugar and the artificial flavors of the gum. Um, so if you're a heavy gum chewer, your digestive uh, enzymes are always at work, but they never, it's, it's, like a, it's like a baby bird waiting on its mother to come back and drop something in its mouth, but it never gets any food, right? It never gets anything wholesome uh, that it can really work from. Um, if you're a gum chewer, you're always activating your, uh, um, your digestive enzymes. Um, you're always putting them at, at, at work. You're always making them work. Um, so tarragon is a bitter. That's the first thing. So the digestive system. Someone else, where, where does tarragon fit in to the body? Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. What you got? Digestive enzymes. What else? Uh, did somebody raise their hand? Did I, did I miss somebody? Somebody? Tarragon, what'd you find? Anybody? Nope. 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 Y'all not no cool drinkers. What the hell? What kind of, what y'all, y'all need to, y'all need about four of these. Everybody on here right now needs about four of these drinks. And then I need to ask the damn question again and then see who turns up. Now listen, if you don't want to ask it on the live, put it in the chat. It's a chat box right there, right there, right there. Put it in the chat. And then I could read your question with anonymity. I mean, anonymity. I said anonymity. I mean, anonymity. I can, I can read it. Okay. All right. Okay. So um, some of the other health benefits. Um, I'm going to pull these because I'm going to, I'm going to tell you and the history of tarragon through uh, cultural uh, systems. All right. So uh, uh, tarragon is known as the little dragon. Uh, the little dragon herb. Uh, it's, a, it's a member of the Artisma family and it received his name a long time ago because it was believed that you could cure the bite of a dragon by um, taking tarragon and making a, a, a wet poultice of it and laying it on the skin. Uh, this is an old uh, uh, Chinese story, a uh, fable, parable that uh, tarragon uh, would cure the bite of a dragon. Um, but it does have some scientific proof. It does help in uh, um, the stings of reptiles. So it, something about the venom mixed with the oil, we're talking about the oil of the tarragon, uh, mixed with the, the venom of the, of the reptile that bites you, preferably a snake, uh, becomes an anti, uh, anti venom. So uh, tarragon, it, uh, you know, it, it does work for that. And that's the oil itself. Um, other health benefits, um, the one that my, my great grandmother used tarragon for, actually, she actually made a tarragon oil. She made her own oil. She used it for toothaches. So she would mix tarragon and cloves together and make a tooth oil. Um, of course, most, most African Americans in the South uh, were limited on health care and they were limited on money, but they were not limited in knowledge. And a lot of them knew plant knowledge. Um, it may have been folklore and folk tales to most folks, but it, th their health heavily relied on what they knew about the earth, what they could grow, what they could sustain, what they could use effectively. So clove oil and tarragon oil um, uh, became a really good um, uh, antibacterial agent if you had infected gums. And of course, being poor and, and black, you probably were not going to go to the dentist. So um, uh, my great grandmother would would make an oil from that and just rub it on the gums when your you know your gums hurt. Maybe your wisdom teeth were coming in, and of course you couldn't get a pool a pool. So she would you know put uh, that oil you put on a Q-tip or put it on a piece of muslin um, cloth 
and you rub that on your gums. So that's a really good way to keep your mouth clean. You could do a tarragon um, antiseptic mouth rinse. So you could actually make that yourself. Um, or you could do tarragon and clove and a, a few drops of tea tree oil and make your own antiseptic mouth rinse um, as well. They're talking about this COVID-19 and, and the need for keeping the, you know, the mouth uh, moist and the mouth clean, you know, making sure that you're drinking plenty of fluid so that if you do have the virus, that the virus flushes through your trachea through, you know, it does not get trapped in the lungs and it goes down and into the gut. Most of us have poor gut health. So if you are not taking a probiotic, um, I would encourage you to do so in some form or fashion via capsules or via fermented foods. Probiotics are a good way to get your uh, gut in alignment. So um, uh, you can make your own tarragon antiseptic. It's also uh, antioxidant and antiparasitic. So if you have worms, most of us do have parasites. Um, there are good parasites and there are bad parasites that live in our gut. Um, if you had an overabundance of parasites, tarragon oil or tarragon tea is a good way to reduce the numbers. Now, what I'm about to tell you is an old method, um, my great grandmother's method, but it worked. In order to kind of find out if you have worms, you need two people. One person to look and one person to toot their butt out. All right, so you need a participant, you need a tutor and a looker, all right? A looker and a tutor, okay? Two people. When it's dark or in a dark room, generally parasitic worms that are in the gut will come out, they'll stick their heads out of your anus at night generally generally when the body is at rest when it's dark i know it's disgusting here just drink a drink 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 a drink first take a sip take a sip hold on i'll come back hold on okay see that makes it better too okay so what you do is get a light a flashlight and the tutor would toot y'all know how to do it too, right? The looker would look and you could actually see the heads of the parasites. You can see them. Some are flatworms, some are tapeworms, some might be an unknown species, but you can see them. You can see them. Um, and so that was one way granny could determine if you had uh, an overabundance of worms in your belly. Generally, her signs were, you're eating too damn much. Look, it's summertime. You, you get breakfast, you get a snack, you get lunch. She called it lunch. You get lunch and you get your dinner, right? And if you're trying to eat anything in between that, child, do you have worms? You must have worms. I know somebody got somebody old in their family that said that. You must have worms. So uh, when that became too much or you were doing that too often, she would, she would, have, she would have you toot your butt and check at night to see if you had worms. Another way of uh, determining um, the symptoms of worms, the old school way, is a person who's always out barefooted. They're barefooted, they're out in the dirt. You get worms, you can get parasitic worms through the bottom of your feet. You know, your sole, uh, your sole of your feet is an easy way for things to enter. Um, the organ system. Of course, the skin is the largest organ of the body. So uh, if you are barefoot all the time and you are in dirt, um, there's a high probability that you have some extra worms in your gut. So you want to make sure that not only are you taking a, something that's bitter uh, daily, but you want to make sure that you're, um, uh, you're doing something, again, for good gut health, that you're bringing up your gut health, you're making sure that you know, everything is in balance. Some of those worms are there to do their job, but the others generally have to go. And as Americans, most of us, we got too many, they generally have to go. Drink a tarragon drink and you might be able to just tell somebody you're doing this for good gut health. Just tell them, add a little alcohol, I'm doing it for good gut good health. That's, that's a good, it's not a good excuse. Okay, all right, well, take a sip. Okay, so we got that. Now, 
They say, I've never known this to be true, and I have not run across anyone who has experienced this, but they say that tarragon tea mixed with a little, um, mixed with a little mint possibly uh, will help you sleep. If you have insomnia, you know, but it's not too, too bad, you know, you just, sometimes you're a little frazzled going to bed before bed, you can drink tarragon, um, tarragon mixed with uh, a little mint. And that will not only help your digestive tract, your digestive system, but it'll also um, improve your sleep. So I have not proven that one. I don't know that one to be true. Um, so um, my next question is this. How many people are actually growing a garden? Urban garden, hydroponic garden. You really, you know, you got some, you got a little bit of dirt in the back of you. You've got a garden. Anybody got a garden this year? Anybody working with a garden? Who, who's got, who I see? Uh, well, Nice, what, what you growing? Okay. What are, tell me your herbs that you're growing. Okay, just the herbs. Um, I have clove basil, the African tree basil. I have some lemon balm. I have spilanthes. I have rosemary. I have thyme. I have lemon verbena. I have, uh, oh gosh, um, lavender. I have a bunch of stuff. Um, this other plant called African Iboza. Yeah, I know. Um, this is all in dirt? Yeah. Okay. They're in dirt, except the only ones that are not in dirt, real quick, are the clove basil, because I just got it, and the lemon balm, because I'm creating, a, and the spilanthes. I'm creating a different space for them. But the rest okay. are in dirt. All right. Anybody else growing anything this year? Any herbs this year? Tammy? Oh, ta Tania. Oh. Hi, yes, I'm growing um, rosemary, and I have thyme, and I have basil, uh, like toasty. I have, I have a bunch of other things, I just can't remember right now. Okay, um, do you have any tarragon growing? I do not have tarragon growing. Okay, it might be a good compa companion plant to, to put in that herb garden. You, you know, you may want to add some tarragon. Um, to that, okay. just ask, ask the spirit guides if, you know, if tarragon is right for you to plant this year and, and see what happens. Great. All right. Yes. Um, anybody else? Lydia? Lydia, what herbs are you, are you planting this year? Hold it, Lydia. Can you can you turn your volume up? I can barely hear okay. you. Let me see. Is that better? Hello. Yep, I can hear you. Can you okay. all hear her? Okay. Go ahead, Lydia. Um, I've got bee balm, chamomile, lemon balm, mullein, echinacea, calendula, um, oats, milky oats. I'm growing. I got a bunch of stuff, but I need to plant some tarragon because I don't have that. Really? And yeah. you, you know you're the herbal connoisseur now. I thought you would have some tarragon. I know. I need to get some. All <laughs> right. Thank some. you. Yeah. Uh, Gina, what do you have in your herbal garden? I'm still a little behind getting mine going, but so far I have some rosemary some basil, some lavender, and coriander. Oh, coriander. Not a lot of people mess with coriander. You're real bold. I like that. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. Not a lot of people grow coriander. That's, that's, uh, that's, that's, if she grows for you, I'm going to sing your praises. Oh, wow. Yeah. She's not, mm -hmm. she's not, she doesn't like everybody. She's not, she's not an easy herb to, 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 to grow. So let me know how that, how that goes with the coriander. Will do. So if any of you are interested in, in cultivating tarragon, um, just know that your plant should be grown in areas that receive full sun. She doesn't like, she likes full sun, but she doesn't like full sun all day long. Like I said, she's a sensitive stripper. 
and she doesn't like a whole lot of attention. She wants a little attention for a short period of time. All right, so make sure that you, you have her. She likes full sun, but full sun for maybe uh, four to six hours a day. Um, of course, your soil should be well drained and um, definitely fertile. Um, I like to uh, mix uh, chicken manure and cow manure in mine and uh, fertilize um, our soil. We have a little bit of red clay soil here, not as red as Kentucky, but um, uh, it, is, it is red and it's rocky. We have, um, our neighborhood is old, so they kind of took a lot of the bricks and things like that, and they just kind of buried the rest, um, you know, buried the soil on top. So even though we've been here 20 plus years, every time we dig up for uh, cultivating our garden, we dig up more and more and more and more rock, more and more um, brick. So um, uh, make sure that you uh, fertilize your soil prior to. Uh, if you have compost, she does love a compost, a composted, uh, a composted soil. So uh, tarragon does really, really good in compost soil. Um, all right, so now let's talk about the nutritional and the medicinal, um, the other medicinal uses uh, and values of the plant itself. Um, when we look at iron, magnesium, calcium, levels um, of those three um, uh, uh, vitamins and minerals in the leaves, um, I'm not sure about the root of the tarragon plant. I haven't done any studies on that, but I would like to, you know, to find out if the ter if tarragon root has anything that um, is significant, um, especially for those who are studying plants or, you know, budding herbalists or just people who just want to take their culinary kitchen style to the next level. Um, she does have a high source of vitamin A, uh, C, and B6. Uh, I found that to be very important, especially for women. Uh, the, B, the B vitamins are gonna be significant in um, all of our mental uh, development, uh, our stability, our agility uh, mentally, uh, anxiety, if you have, if you, if you're notorious for having high levels of of anxiety daily, um, uh, you want to look at putting more B vitamins into your system. Folic acid definitely. Um, you know, there's so many B vitamins. As a holistic nutritionist, I suggest that you simply just do a a vegetarian prenatal vitamin. Every woman should be taking a vegetarian prenatal vitamin. That would just take care of everything. You may need to add an additional supplement to it, but your um, vegetarian prenatal would cover everything. You just think of it. If, you, if you've been pregnant before and you've had children and you, you took a prenatal vitamin, you got all of the nutrients extra because you were growing a human. Well, why should that be any different if you're not growing a human? Uh, we do everything that's detrimental to our health every day, from the foods we eat to the thoughts we think to the people we keep around us. All of that is detrimental to our overall holistic health. So I suggest that you uh, be encouraged to take a prenatal uh, vegetarian uh, vitamin. And then if you want to do an extra supplement, I would, I would add C and D to that as an additional supplement. Those are just my suggestions. Don't substitute my judgment for your own disclaimer, all right? Um, now let's look at the cultural, uh, the cultural components of tarragon. You're gonna find these to be really, really interesting on the medicinal history of how um, this herb has been used around the world. Now I've given you a little bit of how my great grandmother used to use tarragon. Um, it was not her top herb, but it was in her plethora um, uh, in, her, in her little herbal stash. She did use um, uh, fresh tarragon uh, quite frequently. So um, when we look at the Middle East, Middle East, we're talking about um, tarragon. It was used for an aid as, uh, for insomnia, as well as to enhance the taste of unpleasant medicines. Furthermore, it was used, used as an anesthetic for throbbing teeth. Like I said, my great grandmother used it. Skin sores, as well as cuts. And um, um, uh, herbalists in the Middle East also use it as a breath freshener. So again, if you don't want to use anything uh, like Listerine um, or Scope or anything that's out on the market, even the natural ones, Tom's of Maine or any of those natural ones, you can make your own herbal uh, antiseptic mouthwash by simply using um, tarragon. You can just do it with tarragon. Um, in Russia, 
They use tarragon for the treatment of topical skin wounds. It also reduced inflammation and irritation in those wounds. And they also use it in treating uh, allergic reactions that would occur on the skin, remember on the skin. Um, and they use that generally as, um, as a poultice. For those of you who are not familiar with the poultice, um, some are dry, some are wet. You can um, take the herb. I'm gonna tell you how Granny used to do it. She'd take the herb, she'd grind down the herb, she would add lard to it, good old Crisco lard. And she'd mix the herb in with the lard and whatever, what, what other herbs she had, uh, depending on what ailment, skin ailment you had, and then she would lay that on your skin. If, if, it, if she found that the herb could be uh, applied to the skin directly without irritation, she would not use a medium to, um, you know, to help that. So the medium is you know, your lard, your, of, of course, today they're using more healthier ingredients, but um, if you don't need a medium and you can use the, the herb directly on the skin as a poultice, do that. Um, you might want to do a skin patch test to make sure that it does not irritate the skin, okay? So um, uh, this is definitely good for um, um, allergic reactions on the skin. They also use it to treat scurvy and to reduce convulsions as a result of epilepsy and the treatment uh, as a treatment for night blindness. That was definitely new to me. I've never heard of either of those three components um, uh, being uh, something that tarragon is effective for. So that was good to know. In China, traditional Chinese medicine, TCM, they use tarragon as a protector herb, a strengthener of the liver, as well as a diuretic. They also use it to aid in reducing topical skin inflammation, again, and the other uses include um, microbi uh, microbial infections, inflammatory diseases such as malaria, hepatitis, gastric ulcers, cancer, and diarrhea, and circulatory diseases. So um, if you're not familiar with Chinese medicine, Chinese medicine is bomb-ass diggity medicine. Like if you know Chinese medicine and you're a practitioner, you know some stuff that will probably not COVID-19 off his ass. Um, it is not the only bomb diggity uh, uh, system of medicine on the globe, but it is a top one and it is still effective thousands and thousands and thousands of years later. So um, it would behoove you if you're interested more in herbal medicine um, to just do a little research on some basic herbs and see, see what TCM um, offers in um, um, basic herbal training. Um, and then we come to the North American side. And we're gonna, we're gonna look at um, three Native American uh, groups of people who use tarragon very effectively. Let's talk about the Navajo. Um, and they use tarragon in a salve and they would treat and heal wounds as well. Um, uh, I was speaking with a Navajo elder many, many years ago and she was uh, talking to me about the use of tarragon for spiritual reasons as well. So when you think about plants and you think about, uh, when you think about herbs, um, herbs not, uh, do not only have medicinal properties, but they do contain spiritual properties. So if you're working towards a goal of something for yourself, let's just say centering yourself more, and you want to employ something that is natural, you can look up plants and see which plants have an affinity to that, you know, the spiritual side of what you're looking for and find out what, what plant fits. Maybe you need to get that plant in your home. Maybe there's too, too much chaos in your home and you need a plant that signifies um, the spiritual properties of that plant, you know, is calm, um, is, uh, uh, it equals the opposite of anxiety. You may wanna bring that plant in. Um, plants not only have spiritual properties, but they do have emotional properties and um, medicinal properties. So uh, when, you, when you're looking at plants, when you're working with plants, um, make, sure, make sure you're covering all those bases because what you have an affinity to, what you like, may not be what's right for you totally, holistically, all right? So we took a look at the Navajo. Now let's take a, let's take a look at the Chippewa. The Chippewa um, uh, tribe used tarragon for um, women. It was the women's herb. In traditional Western medicine, we look at red raspberry as being the woman's herb. 
But in this particular, uh, in this particular tribe, the Chippewa, they use tarragon as the women's herb. They used it to reduce menstrual blood flow as well as to aid with difficult births. I would have loved to be there to see how they use that for the birth. I'm thinking myself, maybe as a tea, um, it could also, it may have been um, uh, uh, as a douche, possibly. Um, it would be interesting to know how they, how they use that. Um, they also used it in a form of helping to ease heart palpitations by simply chewing on the leaves. Remember we talked earlier about how tarragon is good for the digestive tract. So if you think about tarragon uh, helping that digestive system, now you can add to it that it also eases heart palpitations. So if you are a person who has high stress levels or you are anxious or you have a lot of anxiety, this may be a significantly um, uh, charged herb um, to add to your medicine, your herbal medicine bag or your herbal medicine chest, just to help in moments like that. I'm not sure about dry, how that would go if you had the dry tarragon, but definitely the, um, um, the fresh tarragon, you could definitely get the oil out of that by chewing that up. Um, they also used it in baths, and I'm going to say that these were spiritual baths. It says that they would use the bath, uh, tarragon in a bath for the youth and elderly, uh, as a steam bath to bring more strength to the body. So remember, your skin is the largest organ of the body. So if you're soaking in uh, the herb itself, then your skin is soaking in the medicinal properties of that herb, and you are getting the uh, medicinal benefits of that. So that's how you would do that in a bath. And then the last Native American group to use that is the Chuwak group. And um, they use the herb to keep away mosquitoes as a mosquito repellent. So that's good to know. I'm gonna actually try that one this summer. So what you would do is you just actually make a tea from it, make a tea and you could add it to a spray bottle and then just test it out, see how it works. Mosquitoes are usually attracted to you because of what you're eating or what you're not eating. They just don't bite you because they, they're attracted to what's in your blood. So um, I'm going to try that and I'll follow up with you uh, when, the, when the skiers get out this, this summer and we'll see what, what they're doing. Hopefully some of these skiers got, no, 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 I take that back. I'm honest. I was about to say something real reckless. I take it back, universe. I didn't, I didn't mean any of those words I was about to say. All right. Um, so let's look at the middle, middle ages. In the middle ages, tarragon was used as a therapeutic um, agent and uh, they moved past the culinary properties of, of tarragon, and they use it for treating fevers, upper respiratory infections, again, digestive problems, ulcers, and to stimulate the appetite, as well as to reduce plague ep epidemics. Um, let me repeat, to reduce plague epidemics. I think this may be one that you might want to consider adding to your plethora. Go to Amazon and maybe you could order some tarragon capsules. Go to your local grower and get a tarragon plant and begin drinking some tarragon tea. Uh, it would not hurt your system. It would definitely enhance and help your system. Um, I, wonder about, I wonder about this current plague that we have going uh, uh, around the world. If we were to employ more herbal treatments, how would that work? And what systems are in place to support that? Of course, there's no money to be made if you're using herbal treatments, right? Nobody gets rich off of using herbal treatments to help the body fight a maybe possibly natural disease. Uh, no one gets rich off of using herbal treatments to possibly fight off a man-made disease. So um, I am going to um, encourage you to Keep your eyes open about what you hear, what you read, and what you feel is uh, um, really going on behind the scenes. And make sure that your medicine cabinet includes a few things. One, burdock root. Two, red clover. Three, colloidal silver. Four, zinc. You can do zinc, um, you can do zinc extract, you can do zinc capsules. We do zinc lozenges here. Uh, made with elderberry, you can do that. Um, 
B12 uh, or your folic acid, just, you just need B12. You need some B vitamins. You definitely, your top ones are going to be vitamins A, I mean vitamin C and D. One does not work without the other. You can, your body can take in so much C and then it just, you'll pee out the rest. So you need both of those to help. They're, they're married. They like each other. They're husband and wife. One helps the other absorb. Okay, so you want to make sure you, if you're taking C, you're taking D. If you're taking D, you're taking C. Um, and then um, along with that, uh, you want to make sure that you're definitely getting plenty of fresh air, that you're airing out your home, you're opening your windows daily if the weather is permittable. Um, you are getting some sunshine to your third eye. You are activating your third eye. This third eye needs sunshine and sunlight. Uh, I recently heard from one of my husband's fraternity brothers, who's a pharmacist, that he has discovered that the COVID virus is kind of attached to the, uh, the blood types of certain people and certain genetic factors. So as people of color, we tend to have more predisposed health conditions than anybody on the entire planet, people of color do and especially in the African-American community. So if you have a pre-existing health condition that you have not tackled before, and now this has come along, it's gonna make it a little harder for your immune system to fight, but it's not impossible. It's not impossible. Herbs luckily work with us. They work to integrate themselves in our body if we are willing to work with them. They know exactly what to do. We're the only thing that works out of order. I say that all the time. Humanity is out of order. Uh, everything else works within order. So those are my suggestions for um, having the things you need on hand in your home for your children, uh, for yourself, uh, for your loved ones, just to help you along to keep your immune system um, good and strong. Um, and then lastly, about tarragon, that I had no idea. Would you believe that this plant has some fiber in it? Like, who would have known that tarragon had fiber? Two grams. Two grams of fiber in this. I mean, of course, that's not enough fiber to, like, have a bowel movement or anything, but it's fiber, and it's plant fiber. And anytime you ingest plant fiber, the body can metabolize that better, absorb it, and push it out. Now, okay, here's some sidebar information. When we talk about good gut health, we're talking about how many bowel movements you're having a day. So now that we're on quarantine, people are eating more, right? Yes, okay, because America is usually just greedy, simply greedy. Not because you're hungry, you're just greedy, right? So you're eating six times a day, but you're only having one bowel movement. Some of you are only having one bowel movement once a week. And when you're under stress, you're not having bowel movement at all. Maybe once every three weeks, maybe once a month. That's not normal. You eat five meals a day, you should have five, five bowel movements. Let's think about this. The food goes in, it gets digested, absorbed, but it doesn't come out. Where does it go? I'll take a drink. So you don't know. Let me tell you, it gets reabsorbed into the bloodstream, it circulates, and it becomes, maybe your skin breaks out. Maybe you have migraines. Maybe you have the nastiest gas I have ever smelled in all the world. Just gassy ass, just gas. Just gas with no damn reason, you just gassy. Why, why, because you, you backed up. You're backed up, you need to go to the bathroom, right? You're eating all this food, you're now stressed out, you're eating more carbs. I know, I love potatoes in every form, give it to me. Potatoes in every form, fried, baked. Okay, that's a sidebar. I want some french fries right now as I'm talking. See, it's those type of things. But if you're not eating anything fibrous, tarragon, to push that stuff through your system, you're not drinking enough water, then of course your bowels is gonna be on lockdown just like the rest of the world is on lockdown. Your bowels has been on quarantine before this damn quarantine. Sidebar, take a drink. 
Okay, I'm finished ranting because I could go on and on. And it's it's happy hour. We're supposed to be happy. We're not supposed to be talking about excretions. This is happy hour. Is there anybody who's watching? I got. Who has, I, see like, I see the chat going in my peripheral vision, but I haven't really read any of these questions. Okay, so Lydia, the one. This is the ones I see so far. Lydia says she wants to try tarragon for mosquitoes because uh you you got mosquitoes in Mississippi. Well, it's Mississippi, Mississippi. You know, Mississippi got a whole lot of things that's out that you you know we Mississippi y'all mosquitoes is out. They ain't got no hoods on though, do they? Okay, try it and let me know. All right. Uh. Okay, so uh, who else had a question? I'm gonna answer. If you don't have a garden, what herb could you start with? Ooh, if you don't have a garden, what herb could you start with? That's a good question, Darwin. We want to thank Darwin for being on. We've got a mail on our happy hour. That's so good. That's good to see you drinking with us, celebrating. That's good. You just came for the stripper, didn't you? I know you did. You think you slick? You think you slick? You came to see Tasty Tarragon. Leave her some dollars now. Don't leave her empty-handed. It's quarantine. She's laid off. She needs some help. Um, oh, that's Yana's question. Oh, I'm sorry. I, it's my drink, Yana. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Darwin, I'm sorry. I thought I was, I'm sorry. I got carried away. I'm sorry. Hold on. Take a drink. Okay. So what, what herbs are the best ones to start with? I say the easiest ones to grow would be lavender, uh, lemongrass, and basil. I, I say those, I would say start off with those three. Um, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me get one of my uh, herbal connoisseurs. Lydia, what would you think would be starter herbs for people to, 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 begin, to begin with? Lot of luck with holy basil. That's holy basil, I yes. Start with, yeah. What was lavender? I have a hard time with lavender here because it's so humid, but I think it does well in other places. Okay, so holy basil, lavender, and what else? Um, let me think. Mullen is a good one, especially with coronavirus right now. It's really good for lung support. And it usually does pretty well. Uh, what else? Lydia, make sure, you, make sure you type those into the chat for me, okay? Okay, I'll type them. I forgot all about mullen. She's definitely a really good respiratory herb. I usually use her, I like to smoke mullen. Mullen and lavender, mullen. Those are my three smokable herbs. Well, mixed with wool. But that's neither here or there, okay? All right? Disclaimer. I am a herbalist, so I am always in testing scientific phase, okay? Take a drink. Um, what's the other question that was, oh, uh, Darwin said he read that it can cure hiccups by chewing on it. Ooh, I, I haven't heard that one. Um, I haven't had hiccups in a long time, Darwin. And um, I, I would need to remember to do that um, uh, if, if I got hiccups. Okay, tarragon. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking then you would chew on a few leaves for hiccups uh, to see if that works. I'm, I've got more of the folktale cure your hiccup, you know, turn, turn around three times and jump up and down and toot your booty. You know, I got, you know, I got more of those techniques for curing hiccups than the, than the, um, the herbal one. Um, what else? Anybody's question? I can't see the bottom. Let's see. Was that it? Yeah. Um, does anyone have any additional questions that I can help you with? Either liquor or herb. Uh, Lydia says, most plants in the mint family are easy. Yarrow is another great easy one. Yarrow, yeah, she's beautiful too. She's really, really good. 
Um, anybody have any additional questions or um, they have a favorite alcohol and they want to know what would be a good herb to mix with that alcohol? Um, next week, we're going to feature another herb to the stage. Um, now, you're going to have to come with your big bills next week because Big Bertha don't play and she got six children and she needs her money. So, will y'all sign on next week? We need y'all having tens and twenties ready. She don't take no credit cards. She needs straight cash. All right. And I'll be coming around with the hat so y'all can drop in the cash for next week's herb. You make sure that you tune in. Because I know all y'all want to come to the herbal strip club, but now you want to come. Don't act like you got something to do at six o'clock on a Thursday. You ain't got nothing to do. You're gonna be right here at home with me at the herbal at the herbal happy hour. So I'm gonna be acting like I got, I'm gonna be at the uh-huh. You're gonna be at the kitchen table, just like I am in the living room filming this here herbal happy hour. So just come on back and just bring your bills and uh uh we'll be posting what herb is gonna be featured. And then you can tune in and hopefully some of y'all have, just go to Kroger's and get, get the herb, get the herb. Um, and then I would like to see somebody join along with us, you know, just have the herb. And um, uh, I believe next week is going to be a dark liquor. I think I got to check. I got, I got to look. I think it's going to be mixed with a dark liquor. Um, and um, uh, uh I said it's gonna be Big Bertha. So, you know, Big Bertha always come. She like her dark stuff. She like, she like, she's like, I'm grown. I'm I'm grown. I don't fool with that clear stuff. That's what the little ones. I like my dark stuff. So Big Bertha's gonna come and I'm gonna tell her that she's gonna have a whole house full. Uh a Ken is going to DJ for us. So he's gonna play play music on the one and twos while I mix up the drinks and Big Bertha gets on stage and shows y'all how it goes. All right. All right, so um, uh, unmute everybody's mic for me. And can I get anybody's questions or uh, do you have anything that you'd like to add? We've got about five minutes left. No, nobody has anything. How y'all gonna be at the club and not and not what who is my turn up i got where my turn up people at i think i gotta have some turn up people tammy i see listen i got my cousin on i got my best friend on i got my sister friends on i got my little sisters on i i got my brothers on I, somebody's got to be in turn up mode i'm the only one in turn up mode <laughs> maybe this, oh. <laughs> this is a travesty <laughs> This is a social distancing travesty. I am appalled. We don't have what you have, okay? What's that? That drink. Um, oh, Joanna, hi. Hey. Hey. My, my Florida peeps. I'm glad to see you. I'm glad, glad, glad yeah, to see you. Something about mosquitoes, I think. Florida winds in the mosquito situation. We have big ones, huge ones. <laughs> oh. They come on every every evening. They come in a cloud. In a cloud. Yeah. And I have <laughs> all game. kinds of herbs. It's bad. <laughs> that's, a, that's a gang. That's a whole gang. Uh, have do you are you growing in tarragon? Do you have any tarragon? They don't do that well uh, here in, 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 this, in this humidity. It's too humid. I'm, I'm with uh, Lydia on the, some herbs don't do that well. I, I'm able to grow it sometimes in the winter. Sometimes it grows Mexican tar tarragon. That's what this is. Oh, the yellow flower. Flower. Yes, that can do well in, 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 in winter mostly. Ah, I have Florida. So you can only grow this in winter in Florida. Yeah, otherwise it dies. A lot of the herbs with the humidity die, die here. So let me ask you a question. Can you mute everyone's mic for me besides hers? Tell me what you know, what your traditional use has been with the Mexican.
Oh, mostly uh, they use it for cooking, but they also use it for medicine. Uh, yes, for medicines. But you 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 find a lot of the special recipes in Mexican food that uh, you need to have that tarragon. They use it a lot. So Vande, I think you're 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 mute. Oh, thank you for your expertise. I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, um, and 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 thank you to the ancestors for bringing us uh, Mexican tarragon too. Uh, I was saying at the beginning, I didn't really know you know, the difference in the medicinal properties in Mexican tarragon because I wasn't familiar with it. I knew I liked it in drinks, but I was not familiar with the medicinal properties, you know, uh, you know, in comparison to regular tarragon. So um, uh, thank you for that, for, that, for that piece of wisdom. Oh, let me ask you one more question. Uh, what foods are, are, are they typically used in? Okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, I've seen it a lot in sauces. Mexican food has a lot of different sauces. So a lot of uh, those sauces, you need to have tarragon. Otherwise, it won't give you the same flavor. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Anybody I else? Would, I would like to find a recipe and share it with uh, sisters. Okay, that would be great. I appreciate that. Um, uh, you can either send the recipe directly uh, to our um, social media director, or you can um, post it on any of the pages, the sacred yes. rock. The yes, I will. That way you guys can have some uh, traditional. I have really good recipes that I have used in the past. I don't have anything on top of my mind, but I want to share it with you. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you. Does anybody else have anything to add um, about uh, tarragon and its history or its medicinal purposes or, or just another herb that they may be interested in? This is, this is the time. No? Y'all some suckers. Oh, gosh. Straight suckers. What, what in the world? The quarantine done got y'all low. What do we need to turn on some electric slide? What do we need to turn on? We need to we need to have music. What do I need to do? Huh? I'm coming to you live. What else do I need to do? To what? I'm giving y'all some drinks. I'm trying to loosen y'all up, drop it low. What? Everybody, come on up to the bar for a free drink. How about that? How about that? Everybody, free drinks on the house. All right, we are uh, into our um, we're into our time. I want to keep it. Um, we want to make sure we, we stay on time with uh, what we're doing. And I want to um, um, say thank you to uh, everyone who has tuned in from last week and then this week. And then hopefully next week, we'll have some, we'll have some new faces uh, who are going to experience Big Bertha uh, on the stage. She's going to have on some, 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 some cute stuff too, y'all. <laughs> y'all, tune in, Big Bertha. Coming to the stage. Y'all ain't never seen her like this before. Bring your money. Not no fives and ones. She got cheer in the feed. She need tens and twenties. All right, Big Bertha coming to the stage. Next week, we'll have her special liquor. I, be I believe it's going to be dark. Um, and um, uh, she will be uh, uh, um, presenting some of her uh, medicinal properties and history. Uh, to you for, for knowledge, and um, I hope that you are able to use uh, these last two recipes, these last two weeks. Make a drink for your family. Make, the, make a drink. Well, not for your family, not for the kids. You know, back up from the kids. Don't be trying to, because the kids are home all day, getting on your nerves. You'd be like, oh, come drink this water. And they'd be like, oh, mama, it's fizzy. And then the next day, you know, they sleep. Don't be doing that. That's a disclaimer. I don't do this happy hour for the children, all right? This is for 21 and older, all right? Okay, so, um, but make sure you tune in next week. Um, if you have not 
subscribe to any of our platforms, either on IG, Twitter, or Facebook, do me a favor and subscribe. You can like, click, or share, comment. We have the NCB School of Herbalism and Holistic Health, the Sacred Waters Retreat for Herbal, I mean, the Sacred Waters Retreat for Women of Color, and the Afrobotany Immersion Conference and Certification Program held every August in Costa Rica. Any of those platforms you can find us on. Make sure you click, comment, share, and like. And um, if you have any additional questions, shoot me an email or leave them on any of those platforms. And I've got plenty of time. I do have a lot to do, but I got plenty of time. So uh, I'll, I'll be sure and get back to everybody's comment. In the meantime, stay uh, healthy, uh, be wise, um, love yourself, find something that you can have some gratitude for, use some compassion for something that would drive you up a wall, just pause and be compassionate. Um, show some kindness, do something for someone that you wish somebody would do for you. Do something, reach out, send somebody $5 cash app that you know needs some money. If you got $5 to share, send somebody, send somebody some food. See what's happening in your neighborhood. Check on the elderly. Yeah, you know, check on somebody you love or check on somebody you don't love. It could work the same way. Mm, take a drink. But in between this week and next week, I hope to see you on the Herbal Podcast, uh, Seed Soil and Soul. Uh, that's on Wednesday at six o'clock. And there's a separate link for that. So if you haven't tuned in, I hope you tune in. Next week, we'll be talking about coping. No, not coping with compassion. We're talking about what? Uh, uh, the children next week. It's the children. It's how to, how to manage during this time of crisis uh, if you have children. So we'll have some guest lecturers on, panelists on next week. Who will be, we'll have educators and, and people, counselors, who can give you some extra advice or people you know, some advice about how to cope during crisis with your children. We wanna make sure they're recovering all the aspects, all right? Thank you, everyone. I appreciate you. I love you. Bye.